Good afternoon. Welcome to Mid-America Arts Alliance and to our panel discussion today. I'm Mary Kennedy McCabe, the Executive Director at Mid-America, and speaking on behalf of our staff and board, we're so pleased and honored to be hosting this important, timely discussion about arts and urban revitalization. And I can't think of a better place to have this conversation than right here in the heart of the Crossroads neighborhood a small but mighty space made up of art spaces, nonprofit organizations, retail businesses, banks, restaurants, architectural firms, and residents who care about making a place for the arts. Just a dozen years ago, this neighborhood was only beginning its transformation into a place where artists could come together to talk, create, and learn, and where our community could have access to art in its many forms, whether in a gallery, on a stage, or right out in the parking lot on First Fridays. Many of you sitting right here in this room were part of that vision to create a Kansas City home for art and artists. Mid-America Arts Alliance also made a commitment to strengthening this neighborhood when we purchased this building and made it our permanent home in 2005. We're currently finishing a capital campaign that will allow us to construct a culture lab on this site to test arts experiences, convene arts organizations, and host events like today's in the future. You have literature at your chairs about our organization, but in brief, Mid-America was founded in 1972 and was the first regional arts organization in the country. In fact, Nancy Hanks, then the chairman of the National Endowment for the Arts, liked Mid-America so much she decided to replicate our regional arts organization model across the rest of the United States. We partner with the NEA and our six state arts agencies each year to bring more art to more people, a million people a year, in fact, through arts programming and organizational training, and we're pleased to be a part of this important work. I'd like to thank our panelists, Chairman Landisman, Susie Aaron, Bill Dietrich, and David Ford for being with us today. We're looking forward to a lively discussion about the role of arts in making urban areas vital. And I'd like to thank Harlan Brownlee and our partners at the Arts Council of Metropolitan Kansas City for helping to organize this event. It is the spirit of partnership that makes our arts community so strong in Kansas City. Today's lead panelist is Rocco Landisman. Rocco has been chairman of the National Endowment for the Arts since August 2009, and prior to that spent most of his professional career in New York as a remarkably successful Broadway producer and theater owner. But he originally hails from St. Louis, and I would like to think that in some small way, Missouri is always on his mind. <laughs> Indeed, his first major venture on the Great White Way was Big River, a musical based on Mark Twain's Huckleberry Finn. Rocco's role included persuading Roger Miller to write the music for the show. This turned out to be an inspired decision. Big River not only won the 1985 Tony for Best Musical, it garnered six other Tonys as well, and lasted for more than a thousand performances. This was just the beginning of what can only be described as an amazing run. Subsequent shows produced by Rocco Landsman included Tony Kushner's Angels in America in 1993, and Mel Brooks' The Producers in 2001. Along the way, Rocco acquired five theaters, which is to say 12.5% of the 40 theaters on Broadway and developed a muscular business model of theater owner as proactive developer of new scripts and plays. This has been a most successful approach. At times, these five theaters have accounted for as much as one-third of the gross revenues on Broadway. After completing his undergraduate education at Colby College and the University of Wisconsin, he went on to earn a doctorate in dramatic literature at Yale and then taught there for four years. During this period, he became acquainted with Polish-born novelist Jerzy Kaczynski and aided him in, as editor of two novels, The Devil Tree and Being There. Since becoming NEA chair, Rocco's constant mantra has been the cleverly worded phrase, art works. We will, in fact, be taking account of how many times he says it this afternoon. <laughs> I am sure he'll be amplifying his message, uh, meaning of these two words, but as I understand it, the concept of artwork functions on three levels the output of artists, the effect this output has on audiences, and the absolute truism that artists are real workers with real jobs with a real effect on the economy. But let's hear more about that from the man himself. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rocco Landisman. <laughs> a 
Henry, thanks for that very, very fulsome introduction. Um, you've also given the first part of my speech for me about art works and everything, which is, which, which is great. It's going to save us time. Uh, did someone mention Roger Miller? Um, got a letter just this morning. It was postmarked Omaha. It was typed and neatly written, offering me a better job. Better job at higher wages, expenses paid, and a car. But I'm on TV here locally, and I can't quit. I'm a star. Kansas City star, that's what I are. <laughs> it's great to be here. And I, and I do feel like a star here in this room and in, and in, and in this city, which is, which is one, of, one of my favorites. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Mid-America Mid Arts Alliance, uh, the Mid-America Arts Alliance, Mary, Mary Kennedy McCabe, um, who I, it's great to see her on her home turf and in her home building, no less, which is, uh, which is great. Um, and, uh, and the Arts Council of Metropolitan Kansas City, Harlan Brownlee, uh, for organizing this afternoon's panel and hosting us. But mostly, I want to thank our fabulous National Council on the Arts member, Joan Israelite, there she is, uh, who's really the reason that I'm here in Kansas City today. Although we may have slightly different ideas when it comes to baseball and barbecue. <laughs> Speaking of baseball, there's a few days in 19, the fall, October, I guess, 1985, that I've completely blotted from my memory. <laughs> uh, I'd, li I'd like to say that after 25 years, um, I've uh, forgiven uh, Don Denkinger. Uh, I'd like to say that, but it wouldn't be true. Uh, but um, except for baseball and barbecue, we see eye to eye on, um, on just about everything. Uh, Joan, is, Joan is the best. Uh, there's no bigger cheerleader for the arts in this country in general and in Kansas City in particular. This panel is the start of a whirlwind tour uh, I'm going to be making through Kansas City and, uh, and of a lot of two days. Normally when I go somewhere, it's, it's, it's one day, but because of Joan, it's, it's two, and still there's not going to be enough time to, to see all the things I need to see and go to the places I want to go to, so I'll do that on a, on a subsequent trip. I've already promised Joan. Um, but uh, Joan has put together uh, uh, this, this stop uh, as, as the latest in, in, uh, in my artworks tour. Um, and I can't imagine a better, a better group of people with whom to begin. I was going to go into what artworks means, but Henry has done that for me. So I will jump to uh, the last thing that he mentioned, which is, and it's, I think it's something that's relevant to, to all of us in this room every day, which is the, uh, that the arts are a part of this country's real economy. Nationwide, we have some 5.7 million arts-related jobs and 2, two million full-time artists, and that is a significant part of the, uh, of the national economy. So we are contributing to the economy, obviously, but we do something more, something that other sectors do not necessarily do. Artists are placemakers. The arts build stronger, more livable, more sustainable communities. Social scientists at the Reinvestment Fund and at the University of Pennsylvania have shown that the arts make three big contributions to places. They make a lot more, but in, in, for my money, three main ones. One, the arts are a force for social cohesion and civic engagement. Along with an increase in artistic activity, community, community participation increases measurably. What they found is that people who are engaged, where there's culture, people who are engaged with the arts are much more likely to vote, for instance. They're much more likely to join other civic organizations. Uh, it's a, art becomes a powerful force for social cohesion in a community. Secondly, the arts make a major difference in child welfare. Income groups with high cultural participation were more than twice as likely to have low truancy and juvenile delinquency rates. And three, as I previewed, art is a poverty fighter and revitalizes local economies. Next month, we will roll out, roll out guidelines for our town. It's called our town because I'm a theater guy and one of the prerogatives of being the chair of the NEA is you get to name things occasionally. It's one of the, <laughs> it's one of the few unilateral uh, abilities I have. Um, but it's also named Our Town because it's about, about placemaking. Our Town is a $5 million grant program that will invest in cities and towns that are recognizing their arts organizations as citizens. Citizens with a very specific job to do, make and present the highest quality art, as well as serve a greater community purpose. We are framing this program as creative placemaking, and we are looking at the strategies being used across the country to take a place's artistic and other creative assets 
and using them to shape the physical, social, and economic character of the city. Our interest in, crea in creative placemaking grows out of a program we've been doing, been doing for the last 25 years called the Mayor's Institute on City Design, or MICD. During in each institute, a small group of mayors comes together with a team of design professionals to tackle the real world problems with which each mayor is wrestling. This is an opportunity for these mayors to spend three days thinking of themselves as their city's chief urban designers. MICD and Our Town are designed to support cities that are using smart design, artists and artist organizations to create dynamic places where people want to live, work, and play. And this interest is shared across the federal agencies, all of whom are looking for ways to work together to use the arts as a fulcrum for revitalization. Take, for instance, Sean Donovan at the Department of Housing and Urban Development. In Baltimore, HUD invested tax credits into affordable housing for artists. In Memphis, the National Civil Rights Museum is being used to anchor mixed income housing neighborhood development. Neither of these projects happened because of the NEA. They both happened out of HUD because urban planners understand, to reference David, that art works. To reference Henry, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, that, uh, as, you know, as, he, as he had said, art works. With the NEA as my bully pulpit, I can encourage more of this, this insertion of the arts into the everyday business of our sister agencies. And when we succeed, I think that will be our legacy. <laughs>